وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تمسك بسنته إلى يوم الدين وسلم التسليم الكثير أما بعد نكتنيو كتاب التوحيد on this day of 7 o'clock p.m. Sunday, October the 14th Sunday, October the 14th, 2018 which is now the night of the 4th of Safar, Arba' Safar عام ألف أربعمائة أربعين بعد هجرة المصطفى عليه الصلاة والسلام. And as we continue in this tremendous book, Kitab al-Tawheed, by the illustrious, illustrious Imam, al-Sheikh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab, rahimahullah. And we explain a little bit of the hadith of Abu Huraira, رضي الله عنه. As some of our fellow sisters, وجزاهن الله خيرا, Inform me that I know some people are listening to the class. But certain people, I think, due to the fact that we try to make excuses for some of our people who are listening, that they sometimes become occupied or preoccupied by listening and then they receive a wrong understanding of certain things. It is correct to affirm that Allah, what Allah has affirmed that we do and say that the angels have hearts. That's what Allah has mentioned. So in actuality, the argument is not with me. The I, if you open your book, if you have a book that you're listen, looking at in front of the computer or in front of your phone, if you look in your book, it's there. That's the reason why we tell the people to bring their books. These are not lectures, they're classes. So not lectures. It's the difference between a lecture and it's the difference between a class. These are classes that you have to follow along, follow along with a book in your hand. And if you don't have a book, then have a, a tablet or PDF or whatever that has in it basically the, the actual printing of the book. So in order for you, if you read the, the ayah, it says clearly, if you read the book, the ayah that the chapter, that the great imam, put it in the chapter, what does it say? He uses the ayat that's in the book of Allah. Until the horror is removed from what? Their hearts. So what is this? So that's, what's that? So what is Allah affirming for the angels? They have hearts. So is that from me? That's from who? From Rabbul Alameen. Allah has said that the angels have hearts. Khalas. So people who have a correct aqidah or don't have something in their chest, so Allah knows best for Abdul Zak would just submit to the truth. They would just say, Allah said it, khalas, keep it moving. But those who have maybe something in their chest, or they have an intent of why they want to cause this type of confusion and commotion, then I hope those people have another affair. That's just, another, that's just a sickness. But at the end of the day, it's not about me. It's about what Allah has affirmed. So Allah has affirmed for the angels that they have what? They have hearts. Secondly, we said that the angels that they have what? They have minds, they have intellects, they, un they understand, they comprehend. That's another thing. We mentioned that and I affirmed that and that was not a slip of the tongue. That's something I actually said and I affirm it and I believe it firmly. Why? Based upon numerous ayats in the book of Allah. And also numerous ahadith of the Prophet ﷺ in the authentic sunnah. First, like we said, Allah said to the angels, I am making in the earth in the ja'ilu fil adi khalifa. Verily, they're going to make a successor or a, or a caliphate in the earth. What did the angels say? They understood what the Allah said and they replied. What did they say? They said that. They said, are you going to make in the earth who spreads corruption, sheds blood? He said that we glorify your praise and we also magnify, magnify you, glorify you. What is that all? When they heard that, when Allah said that to them, made that speech to them, they understood it and they gave a what? A reply, which is a clear in indication that what? They understand. <laughs> that doesn't take uh, one person that knows ABC to, to know that what? The angels understand and the angels reply. Then the angels have some type of they have, excuse me, not some type of, but they have comprehension, they understand, they have an intellect. Right or wrong? 
When Allah Tabriq Ta'ala will say on the day of resurrection, for example, when he brings forth all of those who used to worship along with him, even the angels that was worshipped, what Allah that says on the, on the day of resurrection, يَوْمَ نَحْشُرُمْ جَمِيعًا ثُمَّ نَقُولَ لِلْمَلَائِكَ أَهَاؤُلَا إِيَّاكُمْ كَانُوا يَعْبُدُونَ قَالُوا سُبْحَانَكَ أَنْتَ وَلِيُّنَا مِنْ دُونِهِمْ بَلْ كَانُوا يَعْبُدُونَ الْجِنِّ أَكْثَرُهُمْ بِهِمْ مُؤْمِنُونَ Allah Ta'ala says, once he's going to say to the angels on the day of resurrection, are you the ones who they used to worship? What are they going to do? They're going to understand the question that's being addressed to them, and they're going to what? Reply. And they're going to also make a what? A re- not a rebuttal, a rejection of the people worshiping them. Subhanaka anta waliyu na min dunihim. Rather, you're their wali, was their protector besides them. Rather, they used to worship the jinn. Majority of them, they used to worship. What is that clear indication that the angels what? They understand. They gave an answer, and they understood what would happen in this dunya of misguidance and people doing things incorrect and worshiping things incorrect to the point where they what? They rejected the people of them worshiping him in this dunya. That's all indication of what we want that the angels, they understand, they comprehend, and they also uh, they also have uqul, they have intellects. As far as them believing that they're like robots, that's something from Jahiliya that probably we were cultivated upon. And you probably brought that into you within the religion. That has nothing to do with Islam. If you have that type of concept before Islam, then you need to leave it before Islam. That's the reason why we came into religion to come to these classes to learn, to raise the ignorance off of ourselves to know what is correct. And alhamdulillah, if you come to class, you hear something you never heard before, that's good. So that, lo- that show- shows that you're truly benefiting. But you cannot try to combat knowledge with arrogance and belligerence and ignorance. And then try to say, Abdul Razak said that the angels have brains. I never said they have brains. That's a lie. Whoever said that has lied. And need to fear Allah and not lie upon your fellow Muslim brother. And if you said that and spread it, you make to make tawbah. Because I did not say that they had brains. I said they have intellects. And they have minds that they comprehend with. That doesn't necessarily mean that they have a mukh. I said they have uqul. And even in the Arabic language, the word brain means mukh. And you never heard me say brain or mukh. You heard me say uqul. Intellects. Intellects. And just because a person has an intellect does not mean he has to have a brain to have an intellect with certain things that are created. For example, and we can go on about that, such as the jinn. The jinn also likewise comprehend. The jinn also have been mukallaf, that they also been burnt with the duty to worship Allah, which is to let you clearly know that they also likewise what? Comprehend. And they have intellects and they have minds. If they didn't have intellects and minds, they would not have been given the burden of worshiping Allah. And despite of that, they've been commanded to what? Worship Allah. They've been commanded to do good, and they've been commanded to stay away from evil, and they've been commanded to put tawheed, and they've been commanded to stay away from shirk to the end of it. Which also shows that the jinn, likewise, what? That they have uqul, they have intellects, they understand. Does that necessitate now to say that they have brains? Like a human being that have blood and nerves in it? No. That's what we're saying. Just because something has a comprehension and cognizance and understanding does not necessitate that they have to have a brain like a human being. Is it clear what I'm saying, everyone? And which were all the texts we're going to talk about, inshallah. So I don't know where, who said that, that I said they had brains. That was something that you came with. I never said that they had a brain. I said that they have intellects and they comprehend and they understand based upon what they've been given of their aql, of their intellect. So like I said, I don't know what people are purposely, are they lying or, is, or if they're preoccupied, they might have kids in their house, so they, they get thrown off. What did he say? So they heard a part of what I said. And then they attain the wrong understanding. That's the danger of taking lessons behind a computer. That's the danger. Because you're occupied doing a lot of different things. If you're not focused on what you're doing, you could tr- you, it could be dangerous, whereas you attain some cer- a certain type of understanding. That's not what was supposed to be intended. As a result of it, you slip. Then you will now go around saying, oh, I heard the Zark say such and such. That's because you didn't hear the lesson clearly. Or your mind is doing two things at once until you're occupied, your attention got the attention was thrown off, then you attain the wrong understanding because you heard bits and pieces. That's a problem. Is it clear what I'm saying, everyone? Fine. So when we get back to the lesson, we talked about the hadith. We said, I think we stopped at about, talked about the, the now, we talked about the shayateen. We said, stopped at the hadith, still, still we're on the hadith of Abu Hurairah, 
radiallahu an, we talked about that when we stopped at the last part of the hadith, where it says, فَيَسْمَعُهَا مُسْتَرِقُ السَّمْعِ وَمُسْتَرِقُ السَّمْعِ هَكَذَا بَعْتُهُ فَوْقَ بَعْضِ وَحَرَّفَ أَوْ وَصَفَ سُفْيَانِ إِبْنِ عُيَيْنَةً رحمه الله بكفه فحرفها وبدد بين أصابعه أوس عبد الله برين فيسمع الكلمة فيلقيها إلى من تحته ترى عند الكلام هو دمشق ثم يلقيها الآخر إلى من تحته حتى يلقيها على لسان الساحر أو الكاهن ترى عند الناريش that we stop and this is where we stopped at A little bit now, so we said that the, the shayateen that they hear, they hear something of what was preordained of someone or some affairs in this world, that they hear it or they steal it rather, because it says in the narration what everyone, mustariq samir mustariq from sariqa sariqa means to steal sariqa means to steal, but here it's when it wasn't a is uh, is uh, what they what, what they call. Oh, let me go into the little linguistic aspect. Mustariq al samr that they they steal something was pre of the, what they hear, they steal it of what was preordained for someone or something in this world, of some maybe something individ, individually that pertaining to you or whoever. They hear something preordained. They they steal it. He says, and then they pass it down to one on top of another. They pass it down. As it says in the narration, you find it here. And they greet the great Imam, Imam Al Thiqa Al Thabd, Sufyan, the great Imam, Jabal Al Ilm, Mountain of Knowledge, Sufyan ibn Uyayna, Rahimahullah. Sufyan ibn Uyayna described it with his hand by separating between his fingers, saying how they're stacked upon each other of the shayateen, meaning the unseen shayateen. They're stacked upon, something, um, upon one another and they hear a word that is or has been preordained or destined for one of us or individually or something that takes place in this world, in this dunya. Either hear something pertaining to every, anyone individually. Right? Then it says he passed, they pass it down to someone underneath him. He says until he cast the, the shaitan, cast it upon the tongue of a magician or a soothsayer or a fortune teller or what have you. Then it says in the narration, what everyone? And maybe perhaps a comet or shooting star will reach them, meaning to, to what? To knock them out, to knock them out of, the, out of place. He says, for maybe perhaps that shooting star will reach them before they pass it down. Or maybe perhaps they will have already passed it before the actual star reached them. So if they hear something, they lie along with it. What? A hundred lies. And then it says in the narration clearly what? And it is said, أَلَيْسَ قَدْ قَالَ لَنَا يَوْمَ كَذَا وَكَذَا كَذَا وَكَذَا فَيُصَدِّقُ بِتِلْكَ الْكَلِمَةِ الْكَلِمَةِ الَّتِي سُمِعَتْ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ He says, and it will be said, after they cast what they heard from the angels, or what they stole, rather. He said, then he didn't, and it was not said on that particular day, meaning that soothsayer or fortune teller said to us, such and such and such and such, meaning something of the truth. Meaning something of the truth. So that fortune teller, or, or soothsayer, or, or crystal ball reader, or line reader, or psychic teller, all of them might say something to you, to, to you that is actually true. It is possible. And the Prophet ﷺ is given the reality of what, how they attain their news. They attain it from the shayateen. They attain it for the devils, the unseen devils. So if you want to believe news that's been passed down from shayateen, then that is very, very what dangerous. You understand everyone? But they could say something that is true. And they will believe that word which was heard from where, everyone? From the heavens. We talked about this is the description of the shayateen. As the shayateen, as we talked about, this is, this is an example of how we described last class 
that Allah تعالى, had described how human beings, and I said this to uh, Jamal last class, how the human beings and the jinn enjoyed one another or took pleasure in one another, meaning servicing one another in this world. And as a result of it, all of them will be in the hellfire. We talked about in the ayat, which was previously what we said, where Allah Taala says in his book, where he says, رَبَّنَا اسْتَمْتَعَ اسْتَمْتَعَ بَعْضُنَا بِبَعْضٍ وَبَلَاغْنَا أَجَلَنَا الَّذِي أَجَّلْتَ لَنَا قَالَ النَّارُ مَثْوَاكُمْ خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا إِلَّا مَا شَاءَ اللَّهِ إِنَّ رَبَّكَ حَكِيمٌ عَلِيمٌ وَكَذَلِكَ نُوَلِّي بَعْضَ الظَّالِمِينَ بَعْضًا بِمَا كَانُوا يَكْسِبُونَ that Allah that he said in his book, he says on the day of, the day of resurrection, Allah will gather the shayateen from the unseen devils and the human beings that used to want either worship them or utilize them for certain affairs. Allah said he's going to gather all of them together and they're going to see what their, their destined final abode or where they're going to be, where they're going to end up. So you know on the day of resurrection, everybody's going to use every excuse to try to get out of everything that they're in because now it's about paradise and hell. So everyone is going to now try to free, free each other. So it's his fault. It's his fault. No, 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 it was his fault. They led us astray. All that's going to take place. So now on the day of resurrection, they're going to say, oh, our Lord, we took and enjoyed or serviced one another until we reached the appointed time that you had set for us. Oh, you have reached the important time which you set for us. Then Allah will say, the abode for all of you is hell. Abiding then in it forever, except what Allah has willed, very your Lord is alimun hakim. We talked about the tafsir of the ayah, if you look to it, that from the meaning of the word is ba'tuna bi ba'd, that we enjoy one another. That the meaning of the ayah is what is mentioned here. One of the reasons here in this ayah which you see in your books, from how human beings enjoyed one another with the jinn, the shayateen, either. The shayateen servicing the human beings after the human beings submit themselves and worshiping them. Once a person submits himself to the shaytan, or he has done something of kufr, something that the shaytan loves him to, to, to do. For example, like taking the mushaf and doing and humiliating, humiliating the mushaf in a certain type of way, whether it's burning it or throwing it or putting feces on it or urination on it. The shayateen, if you do that, they love those affairs. They love it. And that's one of the ways that a person will gain their service of them because that's the ultimate kufr. Because that is what? That's a deep, different, different type of kufr. That's a deep disbelief. Especially the humili humiliation of Allah Taala with the Allah's book. They love those affairs, and for one one does that. For those type of matters, especially in a certain affairs such as seances, of what you see on TV of slaughtering certain animals and wiping their blood in a in a weird type of circle in a seance in the dark, and then people start to sing music or they're doing certain filthy acts. All those things that are done of what you know that takes place, what they, what they indulge in. All of that is now making the shaitan what? Happy so, and as a result of it, they will what? Service the human being. These are all the meaning of the affair of the tafsir of the ay that we just mentioned. This is all the meaning of it, that we enjoy one another. That's an example that Allah Taala said they all will be brought on the day of resurrection, and Allah will say to them, dwell in hell forever. You're above all of you now because of this nonsense and this conduct and this behavior that you did in this world. By doing that, enter the hellfire. So Allah talks about the different usages in the tafsir. From them, from them is like we said, the, the human being, when he submits himself by doing some type of filthy act of kufr, which will allow him to draw close to the shaitan. And this is the human being's service in the shayateen. This is from the ways of it, by doing these acts. Also, likewise, by the practice of magic and the practice of voodoo and the different types of, of practices of magic, 
whether it be illusionary magic or magic in which a person is utilizing the shayateen to harm another individual or to harm someone or to harm their relationship between two people or to drive them to the point where they're crazy, where they fall deeply in love to them until they reach the level of madness. Not only obsession, madness, where magic can also do. Magic can either make a person separate and hate an individual or a spouse, or it can bring them together where it get, raises them to the level of obsession until they drove, they driven to mere madness. Is it clear what I'm saying, everyone? All those are the, the affairs in which Allah has said, in which the jinn, or the, which the human beings utilize the jinn, and the jinn utilize the human beings for worship. You understand, everyone? And also, likewise, from the usages in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the ayah is what you see here in your books. Where they utilize the jinn to try to what? Attain some knowledge of the unseen. Where we know of psychic tellers, fortune tellers, soothsayers, or people who claim that knowledge of the unseen by them reading certain lines on your palm, or palm readers. And in certain instances, as we'll get into it, inshallah, during the time of the Prophet, some of them used to draw lines on the ground. They used to draw certain lines on the ground and buy. And, and buy. That was type of inspiration from the Shayateen in which they would utilize it that if it was in a certain direction, that means that this is going to happen or that's not going to happen to the end of it. And likewise, during the times of Jahiliyyah, that the fortune tellers and soothsayers were also used as judges to judge between khusumat, arguments and disputes amongst certain tribes. They used to raise their affair to the fortune tellers and soothsayers to judge in their matter. All of those type of usages of the shaitan or the shayateen, meaning either by the human beings utilize them in this way, of what you see in your books, Allah Taala said clearly that all of that is the reason for them entering hell in the hereafter. Is it clear what I'm saying, everyone? Allah Taala says, "Mathwakum al nar, khalidin fiha illa ma sha Allah. Inna Rabbaka hakim al alim. An nar mathwakum, excuse me, khalidin fiha." He said, "The hellfire will be your abode, dwelling in there forever." طيب. Likewise, we say, likewise, we say, in regards to what was mentioned in this hadith, is the same uh, reference or, or, or the same description, excuse me, that Allah to with the mentioned in the last ayat, which is a sort of shu'ara, as I said last class, right, everyone? That Allah to with the said in this book, and it confirms this hadith. So, the origin of this narration of Abu Huraira is in the book of Allah to with the Allah and sort of shu'ara. The last ayat, it's 200 and, I think ayat number 220, 224 approximately. Go back to the book of Allah, but it's in the last ayat, in Surah Al-Shu'ara. Allah Taala says in this book, He says, هَلْ أُنَبِّئُكُمْ عَلَى مَنْ تَنَزَّلُ الشَّيَاطِينَ تَنَزَّلُ عَلَى كُلِّ أَفَّاكٍ أَثِيمٍ يُلْقُونَ السَّمَعُ وَأَكْثَرُهُمْ كَاذِبُونَ And Allah Taala says, Will we not inform you upon who the devils descend upon? Meaning the unseen devils. You can't see. Tanazalu ala kulli afakin athim. Every liar and every what? Every sinner. I'm talking about a, a person that says some deep sin from magic, from saying that he knows the unseen. These are our high magnitude levels of sin, brothers and sisters. You understand what I'm saying? A person that claims that they have knowledge of the unseen or that they can read minds or that they're psychic tellers or that they practice magic, whether it be illusionary or magic, which is utilized by the Shayateen. All of it is what? Is who the shayateen descend upon. Because when a person now indulges in these matters, the person has become from the awliya of the shayateen. You have become from who, one who's close to the devils, to the shayateen, from the unseen devils. When you were now practice these type of affairs. You got to keep in mind, as we talked about, this hadith is going to come, inshallah, so kitab tawheed. Just as a mere person going to these people, Meaning that you go to a psychic, a psychic teller or a palm reader or a person that claims to have knowledge of the unseen, no matter what type of description he has. The Prophet ﷺ said that that person that just demir going to them with the intent, of course, to listen to what they have to say so they can attain some benefit in their life, so-called. The Prophet ﷺ had talked about how the salat would not be accepted for 40 days or for 40 nights. 40 nights. 
just for merely going to them. They didn't even what? Listen to what they had to say yet. When we say that the salah is not accepted for 40 days, we talked about the meaning of that. We said that the meaning of it is that you are mahroom al-ajr, meaning that you've been deprived of the reward, but you still have to pray. You understand, everyone? Because the salat breaks down into two types as far as, as far as in regards to its duty, which is number one, the fulfillment of the obligation of it, and number two is the reward of it. And the reward of it is of different levels, dependent on your concentration and your focus in the prayer. You understand, everyone? As far as in regards for a person that drinks intoxicants, or a person that merely goes to the fortune tellers and soothsayers, or the crystal boundary, or people that claim that they have knowledge of the unseen, merely going to them, the Prophet said the salat is not accepted. Meaning? Meaning that the reward is what? It's been removed. But now you still have to fulfill the first affair we just mentioned, which is fulfillment of the what, everyone? The obligation. Is it clear what I'm saying? The obligation still has to be fulfilled, but as far as the second category of you attaining the full reward, it's been removed. Is it clear what I'm saying? So in regards to the merely, the shayateen, a person going there, salat is not accepted for 40 days. And on top of that, if you listen to what they say and believe it, the message of Allah clearly mentioned is said, لَقَدْ كَفَرَ بِمَا أُنزِلَ عَلَى Muhammad. He has disbelieved that has been revealed to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now, if that's the affair of the person that goes to them, what about the one who's actually practicing it? What do you think his sin is? If this is just a mere person that goes to them and then listens to them, lends their ear, and believes what they say, what about, can you imagine what will be the magnitude of the person who's actually practicing it? Is it clear what I'm saying, everyone? That's even more tremendous and more of high magnitude of sin. And it's kind of far off to, find, find, uh, to believe that there are Muslims out there that actually allow mus magicians to, to participate in the masjid. Yes, there is. That happened to a uh, person, an individual, Dal Mudil. His name is Kamal Makki. He's Muslim. Kamal Makki. Kamal Makki is originally from Sudan, but I think he was, here, he was raised here in America. And he's from the students of, he, he brags about Jaffa Dries and Ali Tamimi. Down the... the, the in, in Virginia, because Jafar Idris used to reside in Virginia, and Ali Tamimi used to reside in Virginia in those days in the 90s. I don't know where he is. Last time I heard that he's, he was incarcerated, then they let him out or something to that effect, and Allah knows best. But at any rate, Kamal Makki practices magic. Muslim. Listen to his name, Kamal Kamal, the translate in English, Kamal. Kamal Makki practices illusionary ma magic. Liar. And they let him in the masjid in Green Lane in the UK. And they let him in other masjid. And the Muslims laugh. <laughs> He's doing magic, telling jokes, practicing magic. This is the level to the Muslims. The reason why they fall into this, brothers, because of this, their ignorance and ignoring, first of all, taking knowledge from his proper people, then ignoring the likes of learning these books of Aqidah. When you learn, learn these books and you now learn the proper Aqidah and the proper belief system, you lose your jealousy from all the hurumat, for all the different types of sanctified or, or, or religious sacred affairs that you're supposed to what? Glorify. It's been removed from your heart. And especially what is the most greatest of all diseases is ignorance. That's the reason why we constantly what? Encourage our people to, for learning. Because when you say shahada to la ilaha illallah, like we talked about before, the only way that you can purify that testimony because the human beings, all of us are going to be asked about that testimony and that covenant that we took with Allah when we said none has the right to be worshipped with Allah. One of the ways that you'll be able to purify that testimony is through knowledge. That's it. You cannot purify that testimony by be being ignorant. All of us are going to be we're bought, but we'll be bought on the day of resurrection and be questioned whether or not we truly fulfilled everything of the prerequisites that what? That validated that what? That testimony. We'll all be brought forth to see whether or not we, we fulfilled all everything that either validated it or nullified it. And the only way you can know those things that validate it or nullify it is through what? It's through knowledge. Right or wrong? 
So that's the reason why we constantly tell the people to come to class, come to learn. These are things that are very important because these affairs that you're learning right now, brothers and sisters, you're not going to be excused for being ignorant of it. These are not going to be, you cannot, you're not going to be excused. These are the fundamentals you're learning in which no Muslim is excused for being ignorant of. No one. Is it clear what I'm saying? As far as something learned, some of the other aspects and affairs of what the ulama are doing, that's only for a group of people. As far as learning the religion in detail and all the different other sciences and the other aspects. But the fundamentals and certain aspects of certain these affairs, especially at this level of kitab al-tawheed, nobody's excused. Because these are fundamentals. These are the ABCs. These are what the gen gen mix gives you the genetics of being a Muslim. Here. And these type of books. Is it clear what I'm saying, everyone? So that's the reason why we say in this regard of what happened with the shayateen. Allah Taala with the Allah says this book in the last ayah to sort to shu'ara. He says, "Hal unabbiukum ala man tanazzalu shayateen, tanazzalu ala kulli afakin athim." That they stay, they descend upon every afak, athim, every sinner who's a liar. They pass on what they heard. What are they talking about here? They pass on what they heard, and the majority of them are liars. Allah has de described that the shayateen, along with their awliya, the what kind of hair I thought I heard somebody calling you there. Along with their awliya, how many minutes we got now? 739. Along with their awliya. For the awliya, as we know, Ya Ma'ash al Ikhwa, we know that they're awliya of Allah and they're awliya of shaitan, or shayateen, right or wrong? The awliya of shaitan from them is like is those who we just mentioned here. From those who claim to have knowledge of the unseen, those who practice magic, those are from the awliya of the shaitan. When you practice and indulge in these matters, know for sure you made yourself. Now you expose yourself, rather you become from the awliya of the shaitan. And the shaitan, as we know, is not going to be someone who you will want to be around on the day of resurrection because he's going to free himself from you. As we know, Allah Taala with the other says in this book. In this dunya, he'll maybe show that he's, he's aiding you, but in the day of resurrection, he's going to free himself from you. So when we say, Ya Ma'ash al-Ikhwa, it says clearly in the ayat that they descend upon every effect and athim. They pass on what they heard, and the majority of them are what? Liars. 221. So you'll find, even Allah Ta'ala talks about the poets, who now, who's similar these days and times, the rappers. <laughs> the rappers. In the same ayah, in the context of the ayah. That's a side benefit. Allah Ta'ala says, He says, وَالشُّعَرَى يَتَبِعُهُمُ الْغَاوُونَ أَلَمْ تَرَى أَنَّهُمْ فِي كُلِّ وَادٍ يَهِيمُونَ وَأَنَّهُمْ يَقُولُونَ مَلَا يَفَعْلُونَ He says in the poets, he says those who are misguided follow them. He says, do you not see in every valley they try to speak, speak about certain affairs? Then it says in that they brag about what they don't do. أَنَّهُمْ يَقُولُونَ مَلَا يَفَعْلُونَ They say what they don't do. You'll find that Ibn Kathir even mentioned about them. He says about about those so those so called poets. He said they'll try to praise themselves for falsehood and they'll try to even brag about evil and falsehood. Similar to what rappers do these days. They brag about, they try to praise over praise themselves in falsehood. Then they want to also talk about people bad with falsehood. Which is similar to what? What a lot of people mentioned about the poets back then. And what people do these days, which is is no different. He says, well, Then Allah gave the exception. Huh. This is where the exception is to let you know that poetry is permissible if it's what? To give and support the truth. So Allah said and gave an exception in the last ayat. That Allah says in this book. He says, with shu'ara, after he talks about, except those who believe, and they work righteousness, and they remember Allah much, and they also likewise, 
They tried to now, not take revenge or retribution, but they tried to follow up of what they've been oppressed with. I mean, they take action of what they've been oppressed with, of course. And it says at the last part of the ayah, فَسَيَعْلَمُ الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا أَيَّ مَنْ قَلِبًا يَنْقَلِبُوا Because in those who are oppressed, or those who do oppression, they're going to see what type of return they're going to be returning back to. So, إِعْ مَا عِشُ الْإِخْوَى So it shows that poetry and falsehood, that's what's condemned. Especially in the music business and singing, because it's all satanic. We're talking about the poetry that's supposed to haq of what we see, of what some of the salaf used to write, because that was aiding the truth. And it was aiding what was already been established in Kitab al-Sunnah, then that's permissible. Is it clear what I'm saying, everyone? Fine. So just as a side benefit, excuse me for what they call istitarad, samihni ala istitarad, for deviating in a way. But any rate, so we know that from the shayateen, from, the, from those, from them, that they're daydana, or their habit, their habitual liars. Allah, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, firstly, Allah has informed us in this book, and likewise in the authentic sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That the shayateen are liars. And it's not upon for one to believe them at all. A person would say, well, how do you believe them? Because there are certain people out there that, ex- that extract news from the shayateen. And then they utilize and take advantage of the ignorance of the, t- ignorance of the people and from the suddhij. For those who are naive from the people, they're ignorance. They take advantage of them. What do I mean by that? You'll find that from, even from some of the sufiyah, who do this, and some of the gym magicians likewise, who do this, they'll find that there was a jinn or that he was there when something of an event took place. Someone from the shayateen, or the jinn. The jinn seen it. So it doesn't so, it's an indication they know the unseen. The shayateen do not know the unseen. They do not know the unseen. But maybe perhaps as, for example, Shaykh al-Islam Taymiyyah gave a good example. He said, maybe the shaitan was at a certain place and he seen something happen. And then he returned back to that so-called wali of his who's close to his and informed him what happened. So then that magician or that person that claims he has knowledge of the unseen will tell the people. They tell the people based upon that that shaitan what? He's seen it. Not because he knew the what? The unseen. So then he'll go back to his wali from who, whether it be from the Sufis, especially from those who are, are the practicing what they call the Sha'wada or the Musha'wadeen, from the jugglers, of those who so called indulge in these type of matters of magic and claiming that unseen, they extract their news from the Shayateen. Then the, this particular individual, the Muslims will say, This person right here is from the Uliya of Allah. And they will make what he informed from the Karamat, what they call Karamat al Uliya. Karamat, in which is affirmed in Kitab and Sunnah, but with the Sufis, it's something else. They'll say what that particular individual heard from that shaitan. They'll hear it. They said, that's exactly what happened, too. That's exactly what took place. And they'll say, see, he knows the unseen. He knows the, he knows the unseen. So that means he's close to Allah. That means that he, he means that he's this. He's, he knows the alim al-ghayb. He knows the, the world of the unseen. To the end of it. Not realizing that what? He still took his, his information from the shayateen. So that means he's from their uliya. He's from the uliya shaitan. And the majority of people indulge in this are the musha'wadeen. Or the people of magic or the people of what they call the jugglers. Who are involved in these type of what? These type of matters. So they in, in extracted all this information from the shayateen themselves. And it does not make them from the uliya of Allah. Nor is it from the karamat. Karamat or what they call lack of better words, the, the, the signs or the, the miracles at which happens at the hands of the so-called righteous. With them, it's not the righteous. Of course, they're not righteous. But karamat al-awliya is affirmed by kitab al-sunnah. But it happens at the people who truly have correct sound belief in creed. Not at the hands of those who extract their information from the what? From the shayateen. They're still from the awliya of shaytan. And they're not from the Uliya al-Rahman. Is it clear what I'm saying, everyone? Is it clear what I'm saying? Shaykh al-Islam has a whole chapter in the Aqidah al It's called Karamat al-Awliya. He talks about the miracles that happen at the hands of the righteous. He says, we affirm that to this day. We say that it still can happen. But it only can happen at the hands of those who truly only have a sound Aqidah. 
They're meaning their aqidah is salafiyah and they're people of tawheed and they're people of sunnah and they're people with the proper methodology and the proper minhaj and the proper, and the proper uprightness that they have with Allah Tabriq Ta'ala. But as long as that person that distracts his information from the shayateen, then he's from their awliya. Is it clear what I'm saying? Is it clear what I'm saying, everyone? I think it's a sister. Is that my phone? Or is that somebody else's phone? Sunoko? Sunoko? He said his name is Sunoko. I'm done. At any rate, you'll call the Atlanta mayor. <laughs> He's back there. He's يا خان الفاضل يمكن يطفى الجوال أحفظك الله يعطيك العافية وطال الله في عمرك بالعمل الصالح يا خان الفاضل الذي وراء الجدار هل يمكن تطاف الجوال is he sleep don't worry about us the other is almost over on his phone Question X. As we know, the Prophet ﷺ had restricted it. He said that they lie along with it a hundred lies. Is this in a manner which has been bounded to this number or could the shayateen lie more than that? What do we say? Jayyid. What do you say? Umar. They can lie more than that. Is that correct? No. They said that the message of Allah ﷺ in the last part of the hadith that he said, when the Messenger of Allah informed that he said, فَيَكْذِبُ مَعَهَ مِئَةَ كِذْبَ or كَذْبَ They said that this was intended, when the Messenger of Allah mentioned this, it's عَلَى سَبِيلِ الْمُبَالَغَةَ To give an extent of how much they lie, not necessarily meaning that it's bound to this. It could be less and it could be more. So it's not the mere fact that it's just at that particular number that's been bounded or what's been met, n- mentioned. Son, take your, take your, Take your hood off. So it's not been bounded to this particular number. It's not just been bounded to what? A hundred. Nor if it's على سبيل التنقيس or على سبيل المزيد. Not to say that they can do it less or they can do it more than that. I'll read what even the great Imam Ibn Uthaymin he mentioned this regard. He says, الثاني هو الأقرب وقد تزيد عن ذلك وقد تنقص فيقال أليس قد قال لنا كي يوم كذا وكذا إلى آخره والناس في هذه الأمور الغريبة على حسب 
ما أخبر به المخبر يأخذون كل ما يقوله صدقا فإن أخبر بشيء فوقع ثم أخبر بشيء ثاني قالوا إذا لا بد أن أن يصدق تنفع he said what is correct is the second which is that they either can say more lies than that or they can what it could be less so it can either be more than that or it could be less طيب so we already talked about that alhamdulillah what is the whole point of why the, the great Imam mentioned this hadith in the chapter? Why? And I want everybody don't lose sight of why this hadith was put in the chapter. So don't use the whole the whole reason. These are just side benefits. But what's the main reason why he put this in the chapter? So everything we've been mentioning, that's just the side benefits. But I want I don't want everyone to lose the point of why he put this in the chapter in Kitab al Why? Why everyone? Kitab al-Tawheed As relative to worship Tafadol That's one part of it There's another part Also He said that the reason why I put this in the chapter He said number one That the angels shows that they have fear When they hear the speech of Allah to the point where it says in the narration that, that if you look in your books, that they even fall unconscious. They become in a state of unconsciousness when they hear the speech of Allah. They hear the revelation, as we'll talk about, right? They pass out, and even they have horror and fright in their hearts of Allah. Because it says in the ayah, what does it say in your books? What does it say? Until the horror and fright is removed from their hearts. It says in the book. So that shows they're in a state of what? fear and they also fall out unconscious at the at the hear of the speech of Allah and on and on top of that like we just mentioned it said they also glorify his praise and they have fear of him and also likewise we'll get into the narrations coming of how even Jibreel falls in prostration and despite of that we know that the malaika are muqarrabun that the angels are close to Allah why? That because they do everything that Allah commands them. And despite of that, they still what? They still have this fear and they still likewise have been mukal not mukalla, but they are still also likewise they worship Allah day and night. And they do not draw become weary. So this is to show the status of the angels, despite of them having high status with Allah and being close, they still have fear of Allah. And they still glorify his praise. And they still, of course, have horror and fright for when they hear certain of the revelation, meaning the speech of Allah, which, of course, of course, shows that what? That they don't deserve to be worshipped, despite of them having this high status. You'll also find that the great Imam mentioned this in the book for another reason. He mentioned this in the, in the book for, for this reason likewise. Despite of the angels being close, then why would you not think that the human beings who are not at this level deserves to be worshipped? They also likewise are human beings that also fear Allah and also likewise are from those who are similar to, as, far as, with the, uh, as far as in the aspect of the ibadah, meaning that from the human beings who worship Allah and they do not, and they, some of them are close, of course, from them being righteous, they're close to Allah, and the angels did not re reach this status, nor did they deserve it. Rather, they free themselves from it. If that's what the angels, then the human beings are for all the more reason that they don't deserve to be what? to be worshipped. So that's the reason why it was been put in the chapter. To show even though the angels have high status with Allah, they still are submissive. They still have horror and fright from hearing his speech. They carry out his commands. They are close to him. And the other descriptions that we gave from the malaika, of them having wings and them having hearts, hearts and them having intellects, despite of what certain people say, <laughs> but them having all these affairs that we have affirmed based upon the nusus of the text. And them also acknowledging that nothing emanates from Allah except the truth, as we'll talk about insha'Allah. Despite of this, they are the ones who still rejects the fact that they deserve to be worshipped, even though they have this what? This high status with him, tabarakah wa ta'ala. Okay, I just said that, wow. This is just a side benefit, and I'm going to read it quickly. 
They said that, that there's, there's a statement by Shaykh al-Islam, Taymiyyah. Listen to this. He said, وَذَكَرَ ذَلِكَ عَنْهُمْ عَنْهُمْ Shaykh al-Islam, Taymiyyah, في السحرة الذين يستخدمون الجن وتطير بهم أنهم يصبحون يوم عرفة في بلادهم ويقفون مع الناس في عرفة وهذا ممكن الآن في الطائرات ولكن في ذلك الوقت ليس هناك طائرات فتحملهم الشياطين This probably comes from the, the wickedness or they saying how the witches used to fire on broomsticks This is what Allah knows best this is taken from that Listen to this Shaykh al-Islam Taymiyyah talks about the magicians he says how they use the jinn and the jinn flies them, right? For to tiru bihim. The shaitan, the shayateen would, would carry them or fly them. Listen to this. He said maybe perhaps they'll come upon the morning, meaning during the days of hajj. They'll come upon the day of Yom Arafah, right? And they're in their cities. And they will, and then on the same day, they're in their other country or in their other city. But how do they reach that at that point in time, in that, time, that short time frame? Standing on Yom Arafah in Mecca, despite of them being yesterday in this city. So listen to this. So even Ibn Uthaymeen mentioned this regard. He said, this is even possible today, of course, what we know with airplanes. This, of course we know. He said, but back then, they didn't have this. So how would this happen? He said that the shayateen would carry them. The shayateen would carry them. He said, وَيَجَعَلُونَ لِلنَّاسِ الْمَكَانِسِ Broomsticks. A miknasa. Miknasa means like a broomstick. The plural is makanis. Miknasa. Alright, so he said that Yaja'anu Linas Makanis Alati took Nasbihal Buyut. He says of which is utilized to clean what? Houses, right? He says, We call Anna Arkabul al Mikna Anna Arkabul Miknasa wa atiru biha ila Mecca. I'll get on the broom and I'll fly it to Mecca. Right? He says that they'll do the Faya Fa'anuna Hada. وشيخ الإسلام يقول إن هؤلاء كذبة ومستخدمون للشياطين ويسيئون حتى من الناحية العملية لأنهم يمرون الميقات ولا يحرمون منه ولا يحرمون منه. He says so they'll do this. So in actuality, those who are carrying them is who everyone? The shayateen. Right. So Sheikh Islam says that all of them are liars. It says, إِنَّ هَؤُلَاءِ كَذَبَ They're all liars, and they utilize the shayateen for their dirty work. They utilize the shayateen for their dirty work. And they also, they do something evil from the aspect of, a, of from another aspect, of, 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 as far as the actions. Whereas they will pass by the miqat, and they will not assume the sacred state of ihram. <laughs> so how are you going to come in had and you didn't even pass by the miqat and you made ihram. He said, that's another thing that's strange. He said, for that reason, we say that the Quran or the people who, who claim that knowledge of the unseen know for sure that the most, they are the most people that lie the most. They lie the most out of the people. And they will add on to what they heard, a lot of other lies, in order to misguide the people. So they can utilize it as a way to instill fear in the people so they can attain some type of worldly benefits or respect, or reverence. And this is what they use against the people in order to attain these matters. Is it clear what I'm saying, everyone? Fine. But we already discussed that. Well, I guess we'll stop here because I wanted to start the next hadith, but it has some more details in it. I guess we'll stop here, inshallah. We'll start the hadith of Nawas ibn Sam'an. Next class, Wednesday. Any questions about the lesson, anyone? Jamda, I like your question. <laughs> about the class. Qurban. <laughs> What's Scientology? What's that? Oh, you're talking about uh, that, uh, that religion that that Hollywood actor made up? What's his name? I forgot his name. What is it? Tom Cruise, that's his name? Tom Cruise. That's Scientology? Scientology. Somebody, from what I heard, they said that's just a rich religion. Because the majority of people that only do it is only rich. 
because they only had the, they only capable of doing it because they they got the money for it. So something like that, huh? It's a cult. If you try to leave, they'll harass you. Well, that's a cult. Scientology, as far as I know, of course we know, alhamdulillah, generally all the nasus in any ways of the religion is any other religion other than the religion of Islam, Salafi is all rejected and we know it's going to be unacceptable on day of resurrection. Generally, we already know that. So we know that's false. But as far as is it involved in magic and things of that nature, Allah, I don't know because I never read the details of it. Unless you guys can bring me something that I can study or I can, when I had the time to research whether or not are they deeply involved in magic or not. Or things pertaining to, to the, not just magic, but utilization of the shayateen in some type of way. Where they do seances or, or, or uh, uh, some type of, some type of uh, uh, not seance, but like a, a ritual that they practice. If those things are involved, then no doubt the shayateen are involved. If they do some type of seance or some type of so-called spiritual unseen type of of, uh, of of some type of environment or something they, dis they display of that type of caliber, then no doubt the shayateen are involved. No, no, no. No, no, no. What I was talking about is all of it's satanic. There's no exception of the rule. Rap music, all of them. All of the stuff is satanic. All of it's satanic. Certain people want to come to me, Abdul Razak, what about the, 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 the Illuminati and all that? At the end of the day, whether or not we affirm that the Illuminati are behind it or not, it's all satanic. Whether or not you affirm that the Illuminati are in control of it or not, all of it is still satanic. Allah has affirmed that these affairs are all satanic. So whether or not we say that there are a group of people that's controlling behind the scenes or not, we still affirm that these affairs are still connected with what? The shayateen. It's clear what I'm saying, everyone? I don't know anyone that goes inside the music business or, or being a comedian or come in, or involved in Hollywood that you'll find, especially at the heads or the greatest entertainers, except that something very, very devastating happens to them. Something from the musicians, from the comedians, from all of them. And I, and I, and I, and I even I did a survey, I was like, so-and-so, gay, so-and-so, homosexual, so-and-so, drinking, smoking, drugs, strung out, depression, did, 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 and the list goes on. So-and-so lost his mind, lost his mind. Something always real devastating happens to these people. Every single last one of them. Turned out, drinking, smoking, uh, uh, turned out by uh, depression, got attracted to a depression clinic because they were going to commit suicide, suicidal, suicidal thoughts, strung out on crack, strung out on alcohol, even, in the, even the same thing with the porno industry, same exact thing. People are strung out, they start really in a state of severe depression, same thing. Strung out on drugs, strung out on alcohol, suicidal, because it's not a blessed business. All these businesses are not blessed business. They're all satanic. All of them. All of them are satanic. Or something devastating happened to them where somebody stole their money or somebody stole some cash from it. There's nobody in those industries that says something happened that was real tragic. Everyone is no exception. Where someone stole, either stole their money or somebody died or somebody strung out or somebody, something, something devastated. Or they, or shaitan dresses in their mind, they're not perfect, so they got to keep getting, uh, they have to now start keep getting operations over and over and over and plastic surgery four or five times until their face is just totally manipulated. Because they're not satisfied of how they look. Shaitan in their head drove them to madness, absolute madness. These, to these, none of these industries are blessed businesses. None of them, with no exception. I don't care, and I want people to not be pleasing because we know there's people out there. Well, I heard when some of the rappers say, "Mashallah, alhamdulillah," all that stuff. Yeah, you know, it's irrelevant. 
you know, they Muslim, they Muslim, well, they're not acting upon what they're supposed to know because they still in music. So I'm not impressed that they said some Islamic phrases that the Muslims say in their music. That's even more satanic. Because you know the truth and you just made it, made it an argument against yourself. And on top of that, you truly don't know the meaning of those words because if you truly praise the law and glorify the law, you wouldn't be singing music in the first place. You understand, everyone? All those things are satanic. Stay away from it. Satanic. Music is satanic. Please don't be an actor or a comedian. Definitely don't be a magician. You name it. All these things are satanic, brothers and sisters. They don't bring any happiness. I don't know anyone that goes in that field that comes out straight. Something devastating always happens to them some type of way. Either their money gets stolen or something gets burnt down or somebody dies or somebody gets strung out. And they say, oh, it's the Illuminati. No, it's not the Illuminati. It's Shayateen. It's, it's an arena of Shayateen. Whether it be from the human beings or those Shayateen that, that you can't see. It's all in the same pot. Once you enter in that arena, you enter into it of, of a bowl pot of Shayateen. <laughs> whether or not we say there's a specific group pulling the strings or not Allah Allah but we know definitely and firm that that is an arena of the shayateen with no doubt and you enter in it that's what you're going to get yourself into and a lot of them in these days are coming out a lot of them are now homosexuals or they go by both, both, both ways or they, or they like transgenders now that's the new thing when men are getting found with transgenders now. All that is in a pot in that arena that people usually get involved in when you enter inside of that arena. You find that you get yourself turned out. Is it clear what I'm saying, everyone? Thought, any questions about the lesson? Fado. Oh. Let's do that to the class, Shola, because brothers are waiting to pray. Is there any other questions about the lesson? Ma baqiya adikum su'al, ma baqiya shay, intahina? Hada hunak su'al min qibla l'akhwat hal tujan ukhta ala jihata nisa Allah. Is there any questions online? Is there any? Tayyip, hada wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabila Muhammad wa ala ali wa sahbihi. سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك وشنو لا إله إلا أنت أستغرك وتبيلك